In this quick and dirty how-to, we are setting up the MicroTik CSS 326-24G 2S plus RM for 10 gig goodness. Now, I'm using Mellanox ConnectX2 network adapters, so I've decided to go with the 10G Tech generic transceivers. These are SFP Plus LC to LC 850 nanometer multimode laser pew pew devices. That and they come in a nifty reusable tin. Links in the description as always. But what we have inside is just your standard 850 nanometer multi-mode fiber. There we go. Right side up. Super position, even with transceivers. That's the business then. Nice little cap on that. But let's get the second one open. It should be more the same. Now, it's good practice to use matching pairs when you are playing with fiber, and that's exactly what I've done here. But speaking of fiber, this is OM4 from Monoprice. This is just LC to LC. Since these are 850 nanometer, you can use OM3 or OM4. Doesn't really make a difference, but stay away from OM1, OM2. But if we want to get these in, we need to uncap the business in. I'll show you how to Stick these together the right way. You have dust shields everywhere. So let's pop the cork. There's a nice little hinge. More on that at 11. Now let's remove both of these. This really only goes in one way. It's not too hard to do. We'll just push this in to our first click. Ah, we're not done. Keep going. There we go. Now it's in properly. Okay, now if you ever need to remove them, let me show you the wrong way to do that. Watch this, pull this all the way back. I've seen people do this. Here's the problem. Uh, yeah, you, you could do a little bit of damage that way. So when or if you need to remove the cable from the transceiver, pull it back just far enough to depress each clip and it'll pop right up just like that no problem whatsoever so let's click this once twice and we're good to go but practice makes perfect so let's go ahead and do the other one more of the same pop the cork grab our fiber noodle pull off the dust shield in the opposite direction, but more the same. One click, once, or there we go. Nice and secure. Ready to be inserted into our Microtech. But this is option one. Let me show you option two. This, this is direct attached copper, twin tacks. If you don't want to go fiber, this is a valid way of getting your 10 gigabit goodness. These are pre-made cables. These happen to be from Cable Matter. Again, links in the description. I use these because they effectively work with anything if you need to get to the top of the rack, to the bottom of the rack. But this is slightly thicker than your standard Ethernet cable. And you will not be doing, well, you, you could do one right angle once. Just don't expect the cable to work again. Not terribly flexible, but very flexible compared to this. This is a seven meter twin tax cable and it's chunky. I want you to think about standard coaxial cable that you would have for a cable modem, slightly thicker, infinitely less flexible. Think no chill, no flex on this. I mean, if you have to go around a quarter, good luck. It's just not gonna happen. You can see the weight difference. This is a three meter cable, still thick, but you know, the transceiver has enough weight to flex the cable. Not so with a seven meter cable. So if you're gonna be doing longer runs like I am, fiber is the right choice. Now let's get this plugged into the smart switch. Step one is to flail about helplessly until it goes in. Now these do not lock in place on this Microtech switch, but you have a little bit of feedback when you push it in to let you know it's there. Don't worry about putting it in upside down because it's not gonna happen unless you have a hammer. But let's get this inserted, pushed into place, and head over to 
Switch OS. This is Microtech Switch OS. All I'm really checking for is the link is on and it is at 10 gigabits. That's good. Couple of options. This is a lot less complex than router OS and that it makes sense. It's logical, but I'm looking, I get good voltage, TX power, RX power. That's fine. 25C. We have options for port isolation, link aggregation, forwarding. Here's stats. Make sure you're sending some data bits through your fiber noodles. That'll be good. Keep an eye on errors, FCS errors, like if you have a bad cable or transceivers. And system. Yeah. Pay no attention to the temperature whatsoever. That is pure RNG on these devices. You can safely ignore it. If it cuts off, it's too hot. Now, what you probably showed up for, can it do 10 gig at line speed? Well, through the magic of SSH with a little bit of iPerf 3, send it and receive test. We're transferring 1.15 gigabytes a second at 9.89 gigabits a second. Both ways, no problem. So what do I think about the Microtech CSS 326, 24G, 2S, plus RM? Question mark, well, you know what? It gets the job done for a price that's more than acceptable. It does, but seriously, Microtech, let's work on that naming. I can only assume you arm an intern with pen and paper, stuff them into a rubbish bin, set them off down a steep incline, and use whatever they manage to scribble down as the device name. Now, what do I use it for? I use it to send between 12 and 13 channels of uncompressed real-time audio around the studio along with three 1080p60 NDI video sources. It's been completely stable. I've not had a problem with it. Now, I was worried since it is in fact fanless and this studio can hit 28C in the summer after a few hours, but this little guy keeps on keeping on. Good on you. Good on you. Now, again, I do want to stress that the temp sensor is powered by RNG. Even at 23C, right now, it's reporting 68. No load whatsoever. I even saw a post on the Microtech forums from a Microtech employee stating it's not exactly accurate, and I agree. Now, at the end of the day, if you do need two 10 gig ports, 24 1 gig ports, along with some extra switchy features typically not found in sub 150 devices, you got to give this a look. Um, it's rack mountable. It's silent. Has no problems dealing with multiple NDI video streams or NetJack audio streams. It's doing exactly what I needed it to do. I'm happy with it. But that's going to do it for our quick and dirty guide and overview of the Microtech. I'm not saying all that again. Microtech Switch. Link in the description if you like it. Along with a link to our Patreon, where you can find all the beautiful party people who make everything we do on this network possible. We don't do ads. It's ad-free. There is a connection there. Pretty sure what it is. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, come check out our stuff. Linux Gamecast Weekly. Longest running podcast for Linux gaming. And what we do on Wednesdays. Just these stranger things going on in Linux. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. All right, beautiful people. I'm out. Uh, as always, get out there, make something awesome.